إن في الجنة نهرا لبن. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. The question was about wiping over the socks, and the Sheikh said that uh, this is a dispensation. The ulama dis- disagreed about it. Some of the ulama, like Abu Hanifa radiyallahu anhu, felt that uh, to that it was permissible to wipe over socks, and his proof was uh, a hadith in which it mentioned the Prophet sallallahu wiped over uh, jawrab, and jawrab generally means socks. Uh, khuf is a type of uh, it's not a it's a, it's a type of leather sock uh, that the Arabs used to wear, and that was what Imam Malik radiyallahu anhu stipulated that the jawrab be khuf. Uh, concerning the hadith, he was aware of the hadith and he felt that some of the ulama said the hadith had some ittirab in it. In other words, there was something that was, uh, that was unsound in the transmission. But Imam Malik said that, uh, that, or the Maliki said that the jawrab here was only being used uh, as other than sandal. In other words, that the Arabs would use jawrab to indicate khuf as well. And so uh, this is a difference amongst them. But he said that it's a rukhsa, it's a dispensation, that if you're on an airplane or something like that, it's very difficult to, uh, to do the wudu and you don't have leather socks on, you've got uh, socks on. He said in that type of circumstance, he would feel that, that uh, it would be valid to follow that rukhsa. Whereas the sheikh said that, uh, if he's here, like on a place where he's able to do wudu without any difficulty, then he would not. And he said that some people actually, some of the ulama feel that the rukhsa is not a rukhsa like mutlaqa, you know, it's just you can use it any time, that it's a khilaf al awla, that it's actually uh, to do it, it's, it's, it's not makru or anything, but it's, it's more appropriate that you should do it. Uh, in other words, you should you wipe your feet, wash your feet, wipe your feet, and not over socks. Other ones said, no, it's, it's, it's a rukhsa, it's a valid rukhsa uh, from the Prophet ﷺ. And uh, he said that you should watch the conditions. Some say a day and a night, others say three days on a journey. Uh, he said Imam Malik didn't stipulate any time. You could do it for a year or whatever, uh, uh, if it was leather socks. It had to be khuf leather. You had to be able to walk in them uh, without them falling apart. And uh, if there was a little amount, some say like a third that was split or cut, then that was still all right. But he said you should also, you have to be tahir when you put them on. In other words, you can't put them on and then wipe over. You have to be in a state of tahara. Sa'idi said, عن بنسبة العرف العادة المحكمة في الدعوة هنا في الغرب كثير من الناس تأثروا من أفكار الذي يسمون العصر الجديد مثلا الناس يقولون يتكلموا عن الطاقة الإيجابية أنه في بعض الناس عندهم طاقة إيجابية وفي بعض الناس عندهم طاقة سلبية يعني لما في واحد يهزك بالسوء يعني كانوا عنده ذبذبات أو شيء تخرج منه وتهزك بالسوء وفي واحد عنده ذبذبات طيبة يعني هم يستخدمون هذه اللغة فهو يعني سائل يسأل هل ممكن يعني نستخدم هذه يعني المصطلحات للدعوة إذا نريد أن نبلغ مثلا لما نتكلم عن البركة إذا هم يفهم يعني البركة عن, عن هذه الطريقة أن البركة كأنه شيء ذبذبة طيبة يعني <تصفيق> عند الإنسان بما هو هذا النبي so the, sh- the, sh- the sheikh said that, that many people, yeah, I'm, I'm going to tell the question. The question to the sheikh was that many people are influenced by New Age ideas and concerning this idea of customs of people, people use language like positive energy, resonance. Uh, uh, can we use these type of terminologies when we're speaking to them, like positive energy is like baraka, uh, chanting is like dhikr, meditation, things like that, or does this compromise the deen? The Shaykh said that the Prophet ﷺ said, speak to people according to the level of their knowledge. If those terms are beneficial in conveying meanings, that that's fine. But he said that you have to be aware that there, there's kufr in some types of uh, expressions, and, and you have to be really aware of it. For instance, the idea of sukhriyat al qadr, which means the folly of fate. <laughs> uh, if, if somebody says, oh, well, that's just the folly of fate. Uh, that is haram to say that. You, you can't say that. Or the divine comedy. Something like that. Uh, there, 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 
there are things in the, uh, in, in, in the language that are actually unacceptable to say. And, and so he said that the mu'min should always be really vigilant about the terminology that he uses, the words he uses, and he should be aware that words actually can, can, can be unacceptable. Uh, he gave an example of, he said that they were looking at some the other day and somebody said, oh, it's the benefit of modern technology. And another person corrected him saying, is Allah's benefit, uh, you know, it's... In other words, he said it, it's important to, to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything and to attribute things to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you get into the habit of doing that, it'll protect your tawheed. Uh, and, and you won't fall into hidden types of uh, association with Allah. Like somebody say, oh, the, the medicine benefited me. You should always remember that it's Allah who does everything. Allah is the creator of creation. He made everything. He made the medicine. It's He who benefits you and nothing else. So he said it's, it's important to do that. So he said he would say that yes, it is, but he said that would, it would be under the stipulation of uh, Nabaha, which is somebody who's got... Uh, you know, they've got an intelligence that enables them to do those type things without, uh, without uh, doing something that would be incorrect. Yes, or yes. Yeah. The nuances, you know, the, they know the nuances of language, the more subtle meanings of language so that they don't say things that are kufar. I mean, أنا رأيت كنا في جامعة هنا نصادق من مصائب أمريكا عندهم هذه شرط اللي عنده إعلانات ناس يربسون إعلانات وهذا كان عنده كمبيوتر ومكتوب باللغة الإنجليزية The Almighty PC الذي باللغة العربية لو ترجمته الكمبيوتر القادر على كل شيء يعني وهو يصلي الجمعة The Almighty PC I mean so you can't say that the almighty computer, something like that. Like here they say the almighty dollar. هم يقولون هذا في الدولار كذلك. يقول the almighty dollar. يعني الدولار القادر على كل شيء. سائل يسأل عن هل يجوز لإذا إذا أثبت الأطباء أن الدماغ قد مات هناك حياة في في الجسد. لكن هم يقولون أن الدماغ مات وفي الحقيقة ليس هناك حياة معنوية هناك حياة نباتية فقط فهل يجوز في ذلك الوقت إذا كانت الحياة معتمدة على مكينة للتنفس أو لاستمرارية الحياة هل يجوز لنا أن أن نطفي الكهرباء أو شيء؟ هو هذا هذه مشكلة كبيرة علينا منها في المجمع ما زاد يعني موضوع أختي ورد فأنا لا أفتي ب برفع الأجهزة ويعني أتوقع يعني أتوقع. So the question is about machines. If somebody's been declared brain dead, is it permissible to turn the machine off that's keeping them life-sustaining machine? The sheikh said that this is an area that they've had problem with the majma al fiqhi. The traditional fuqaha said that life was based on the heart. Uh, and not the brain. So if the heart was still beating, then technically the person was still considered alive. And so uh, he said that this idea of a vegetative state of brain death uh, is something that's, that's really new to the, the, the scholars. Uh, I, obviously they knew what coma was, but uh, th this is something new. So he said that, uh, that he personally doesn't feel uh, comfortable about giving fatwa to, to do that. Um, some, some people have, if it's indeed uh, what they said, if there's a, an atrophy has begun within the actual, uh, you know, the body itself. In other words, the, 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 the brain has, has atrophied. Some of them said that that's permissible, but he said what determines that, when is it determined, something like that. It's difficult to assess. So he personally uh, <coughs> prefers just to be silent about that. He doesn't have an opinion either way. Uh, he, he's not saying yes, he's not saying no. This is a very important question, but for the personal meaning of the companies. Does it consider Islam or not? Or does it consider it? Or does it consider it? For example, does the company consider it? For example, does the company consider it? Or does the company consider it? Yes, yes. 
شخصيا معنوية لكن يعني الأمر هو هكذا هو هكذا كما ذكرته لكم yeah, this, this is a really important question a good question uh, rulings concerning corporations there's a law here that protects actions of uh, owners from legal responsibility and this is something that it's actually originally I was telling Sheikh earlier it's originally comes from Santa Clara which is probably why the corporation set up shop there uh, it happened back in the 1880s, Santa Clara versus the state of uh, the Southern Pacific. And uh, the, the, it went to the Supreme Court, and corporations were granted uh, the status of an individual. In other words, uh, you couldn't sue individuals uh, who, were, who were owning the corporation, so they would be free and their wealth would be protected. And it, it was a landmark decision. And in fact, some of the best legal minds at that time said it's absolutely insane. Uh, it was an insane decision, and it's never been repealed. But it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, I think really it might be one of the reasons why Silicon Valley is actually in that county, because um, corporations do know the significance of symbol. Uh, but the sheikh said that this is something that they've debated. He said that uh, the idea of a corporation having legal standing uh, as a personality or, or a, a legal, uh, 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 an individual with legal rights uh, is something that's alien to the Sharia. He said that the only example of that that we have is the awqaf, that the awqaf that are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, do have that type of status, that the, the nadir or the person who's uh, overseeing it is a wakil. He's not uh, uh, an individual in that way that uh, can be taken into account uh, f uh, for the uh, zakat, I mean the awqaf. But the sheikh said that some at the Majma' al-Fiqhi, they uh, looked at this and the, uh, the idea of these limited partnerships, uh, a corporation that has limited responsibility, it can declare bankruptcy and the debtors are not able to sue the people who were the board or they, for, for their private wealth because they separate themselves from the corporation. He said that, that personally he, he favors the idea of that an in individual is responsible, that you do have individual responsibility because the, the word in Arabic, is the dhimma, which is responsibility, is that you can hold other people to account and you can be held to account. And if you have a corporation that's it's really, there, it, you're saying that there's no people there. It's just an entity. Then who's accountable? Somebody has to be accountable, and it should be the people that own the corporation. They should be accountable. And so he said that that's, that's what he feels more comfortable with, that it should remain that individuals are indeed accountable and their corporations are accountable. Their corporations, if they are sued, uh, involve the people who own the corporation. That They're, 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 they're the people that... Uh, Alhamdulillah. وإما يعطيك إلى أن تموت وهم لا يعرفون متى ستموت قد تعيش وهو مبني على إحصاءات الشركة تعمل إحصاءات ويقول مثلا الإنسان عادة يموت سبعة وسبعين سنة إن كان إمرأة وسبعين سنة إن كان ذكر في أمريكا هذا هو العادة فهم يبني على هذا هل هو في مصلحتهم أن تدفع وهكذا فالسائل يسأل هل يجوز لهم أن يأخذ هذا الذي هو حتى أن يموت أو هل هناك نوع من الغرر في هذا فيه لا شك نوع من الغرر لكن الغرر إذا كان خفيفا أو لم يكن شديدا جدا وكان الناس بحاجة إليه فإنه قد قد يعفى عنه أو تفر غرار يسير لم يقصد يقول خليل للحاجة يعني بثلاث شروط يكون الغرر يسيرا ويكون غير مقصود ويكون للحاجة لحاجة الناس إليه فأرانا الأمر لعله إن شاء الله واسع وما دام الإنسان له في مصلحة وما دام التعامل به بهذا الشكل 
ف وشركات تفرضه لان الانسان لابد ان يضع شيء في هذا الصندوق الضمان او الصندوق الذي فارى ان الامر واسع ان شاء الله مع ان الاصل فيه ان الانسان ياخذ حقوقه و لكن اذا كان الاجدى له والاولى ان يحافظ على هذا حتى في ايامه التي قد يكون فيها ضعيفا عن العمل يجد عملا لا باس. So the, there's a question about retirement that some corporations have a situation where when you retire they'll give you one lump sum and uh, or that you can choose to be given a certain amount of money every month until you die and obviously you don't know when you're going to die and they base this on a type of statistical data on what the average lifespan is is it better for them so they work it out they're not losing out um, and uh, so the question is is that permissible because there's really a type of deception in here no, it's called bi'ad gharar when you have gharar where you don't know if you're going to get something or not. So you might live one month and you die. Whereas if you got the whole lump sum, uh, you know, it's, it's there. You get what you get. So the question is, is it permissible to do that? The sheikh said that, uh, that th- there's definitely a type of de- deception in there in, in, in the transaction because it's unclear how much money you will get if you choose the second option. But he said that Sidi Khalil and the Mukhtasar says that a little bit of deception is all right uh, with three conditions. One of them is that it is indeed a little bit. Uh, it was unintended. In other words, that's not the intention. You weren't, it's not fraud. You're not trying to be fraudulent, which they aren't in the sense that they have worked it out uh, statistically on an average. Uh, and then finally, that there's a need. He says that he feels like it's probably better to, to consider it uh, permissible to do that uh, just given the circumstances of, of uh, uh, retirement and the difficulties that people can find themselves in, uh, if it's a type of security uh, that, they, that, that they'll have, especially when they get weak and are un- unable to, uh, uh, to uh, take care of themselves or to work, that he would say that, that, uh, that it would be a valid uh, option. للأسف كل شيء ينتهي أنا عندي رحلة ف... أنا حقيقة مفارقتكم صعبة لكن سبحان الله نحن كل أخ مفارقه أخوه أي. 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 الفرقدان كما قال الشعر أي. على كل حال نحن نودعك ونودع لجميع إن شاء الله أيضا نحن أيضا he said he wants to just uh, say goodbye to, to me and to everybody here um, he said that the nature of the world is that uh, there's separation and everybody has to leave everybody else at some point. Uh, and he said that, uh, so he, he just wants to, to say that to all of you that. قال الشعر نودعكم ونودعكم قلوبا لعل الله يجمعنا وإلا He said that, like the poet said, we say goodbye to you, but the hearts. Uh, are together and perhaps Allah will bring us together in another time and place. Jazakallah anna khairan. My advice to you all, inshallah, make dua for the Shaykh. Allah yahfadahu wa yu'amminuhu wa yurudduhu ila ahlihi saliman ghaniman inshallah wa yajiduhum fi afiyatan wa sahha. Wa inshallah yujazihi ahsan ma jaza. أستاذنا عن ترميذته وشيخا عن أتبعه ومحبه وإن شاء الله نرجو من الله سبحانه وتعالى أن ينفعنا به ويجعلنا متأدبين معه ويجعلنا من أحبته وخاصته إن شاء الله نرجو من الله أن يجعل في قلبه مكان لنا يذكرنا في جرواته وخلواته وإن شاء الله كذلك نرجو من الله أن يجعل هذا هذا المكان عامرا بالعلم والمعرفة والمعرفة والتطبيق وحب السنة وحب الديانة وحب الورع والتقوى وإن شاء الله يحفظنا من كيد الكائدين وشر الحاسدين ومكر الكافرين وكره المشركين إن شاء الله فجزاكم الله خيرا uh, and we also thank Sheikh Muhammad Al-Yaqubi. Uh, he's going to be traveling with me. We're going to Imam Zaid's community. And all of you, inshallah, may Allah give all of you a safe journey back to the places you came, enriched. And inshallah, Allah increase you in knowledge. 
and give you the ability to practice what you've learned here. Uh, the best thing is, uh, like Imam Malik anhu said, that knowledge is half of knowledge is la adri, nusf al ilm, la adri. So the Sheikh, uh, as you know, I think, like I said, the best thing that he's given us is that we should know now after this week, la adri. And I always say, Sheikh, خلاص هذا يرتسخ في ذهني لا أدري يعني so لا يفتي ومارك في المدينة حقيقة and this is one of the gifts of the Jahabida that they teach you تواضع humility and to know your place so he's a great barakah for this ummah he's a mafkhara for us and for our ummah and inshallah Allah make him beneficial for many many years to come Allah يمد في عمره ويطول عمره بالصحة والعافية inshallah we deem a ni'ma, inshallah. Zawallahu khairan. Zawallahu khairan. Takbir! Takbir!